Hey, welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about the substitution rule, which is a really powerful, important, and beautiful method for integration. We're going to need this technique for integrating more difficult, complex integrals. Before we jump into the substitution rule, what I first want to do is do a quick review of differentials, because throughout this whole process of the substitution rule, we're going to be playing with differentials constantly. Again, the hope is that you've seen differentials when you went through differential calculus, but that's not a huge deal. Honestly, I feel that most people really become comfortable with differentials when they start doing substitution, because that's when you have a real reason to deal with these differentials, split up that, that derivative fraction piece in the Leibniz notation. Um, but let, let's get into it here. So in this first case, if I have u equals x squared, I'm asked to find du. What I would do is I would apply the derivative with respect to x of both sides of this equation right here. And when I do that, the derivative of u with respect to x, that's simply just du dx. That's the definition of this statement right here. On this other side, since I'm integrating with respect to x of x squared, what I would simply get is 2x. Again, there's, this is important kind of when you're thinking about these. There's no kind of a other chain rule because I'm differentiating with respect to this variable right here so I don't get out this extra factor. I could write the dx over dx. That's just a factor of one, but I digress. Let's move forward. In this case, I'm trying to find du. So what I'm going to do, again, is realize this is really just the division of these differentials. I'm going to multiply both sides of this expression, expression by dx. On this side, the dx is cancel, and what I end up with is du equals 2x dx. Again, really important at this point is the fact that when you see like this du dx notation, probably when you're first learning derivatives, you think like, well, that's just the notation that says that we're taking the derivative. But importantly, it's a really powerful notation. These are actually infinitesimal values that you can multiply or divide. We've been using them in our integration, right? We have that little dx that represents that small change in the interval that is just a multiplication. And you'll really see that um, in its true colors in this video. This second example is actually not super important for substitution, but it will be for integration by parts, a move that we're going to have very soon. Um, and it also just ties in this idea that I, I want to get practice with differentials, but then also play with this idea now that we have differential and integration being opposites of each other. We'll use that method right here. But first of all, given this differential dv, what I'm going to do is divide both sides of this expression by this dx right here. And then what I get is dv dx equals the cosine of x. And then what I'm going to do is apply the indefinite integral to both sides. Um, one thing that might be helpful, I can rethink of this uh, as this. So this is now the operation of the derivative with respect to x on v equals uh, this cosine of x. And so what I'm going to do now is apply the integral with respect to x of both sides. The reason I'm doing that is the integral, the indefinite integral, will cancel this derivative. Again, that's, the, that's a consequence of the fundamental theorem of calculus. So I've applied the indefinite integral to both sides of this equation. When I, when I integrate this, again, what I output from this thing, this, this function in blue, is the antiderivative. Well, the antiderivative of the derivative is just the original function. That might kind of blow your mind a little bit, but if you look at it, you'll, you'll get it, I'm sure. And then if I anti-differentiate uh, the cosine of x, what I get is the sine of x. And then we can write this plus c. The consequence of needing the plus c um, will be important in different contexts. Again, I use these examples just to remind you this idea of differential, specifically the idea of playing with these factors, these infinitesimal factors. Um, I'm depending on, on each of these, especially the second, if it, you're really kind of thinking, oh my god, that was pretty hard on the brain, don't worry too much. This was meant as an introduction. You'll be seeing the consequences of this moving forward. The most important thing for this example is feeling comfortable with this first move of differentiating this expression and then moving these differential factors around. 
All right, so here we have the substitution rule. The substitution rule is the integration inverse of the chain rule in terms of differentiation. So this is undoing chain rule, if you want to think of it that way, or simply the inverse of the chain rule. Here is the setup is that g prime of x needs to be continuous. f has to be continuous on the outputs of the g of x function. We're also in this setup defining g of x to be this u that shows up in this part of the equation. But you might see that the bits of the chain rule here, right? So what we're integrating is something that looks like this, where this is a composure, this is f composed of g, um, and then has this multiplied by the g prime of x function. It looks like this action of the chain rule. Specifically with the chain rule, right? Remember the fact that if we have the composed, these functions composed together, g inside of the f function, and then we differentiate with respect to x, what we get when we do this is the derivative of the outer function with respect to the inner function right here, and then times the derivative of the inner function. We also know that this doesn't just doesn't work just for two composed functions. We could have a bunch of nested functions. Then at this step, we would then use the chain rule on the outer function around the inner functions all the way down. Before we show examples with this rule, I first want to provide a short proof. Well, what I want to do is before I show that short proof, just to define a couple things here real fast. First of all, um, I'm going to let big F be the antiderivative of F of X. Specifically, what that means is that F prime of X equals F of X. And also, if I have big F of X, composed of the g function, and then I differentiate that. So given these two pieces of information right here, this is the only slightly tricky part about the proof I'm about to do, but it should be clear that big F of g will then end up being little f of g of x, because I compose the outer function and times the inner function right here. All right, so the proof of the indefinite integral part of the substitution method is really quick. All we need is this statement about the antiderivative and the chain rule being involved. So we use, using that equation right there, we know that this statement then is equal to big F of g of x, again, big F being the antiderivative of f of x, plus c. But as a definition, u equals g of x, so this is just f of u, plus c, the antiderivative of little f with respect to u. And then this is the definition of the integral of f of u du. In this first example here, we're trying to integrate 2x times sine of x squared with respect to x. What I'm going to do in this example, I'm just going to show you the method. I'm going to make the choices of you, show the substitutions that need to happen. Um, then I'll stop and go back and we'll talk about why I made those choices. That's going to be the hardest part moving forward. When you look at a problem, you think you can use substitution, it'll be like, well, what will u equal? And so I'm going to try to model that here and you'll see we'll get some more complex examples moving forward. First thing I'm going to do is define my u that I'm going to substitute. So I'm going to let u equal x squared. I'm using x squared just by the way, because it's the inner function here, that's not always the case, but you'll see what will happen here. And so I get u equals x squared. That means du dx equals 2x. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this differential move. I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by this differential dx. And that will give me that these cancel over here, that du equals 2x dx. Now what I'm going to do are make my substitutions. The first substitution should be very clear. What I'm going to do is replace the x squared with this u right here. So this becomes sine of u instead of sine of x squared. I'm also going to make the substitution of these differentials here. And this is a really important move because if I want to actually integrate now that a function that has this u as this variable on the inside, I can't do that with respect to x in any interesting way. But with this move with the differentials, what I can do is I'm going to substitute the factors of 2x and dx, which appear here outside the function. I'm going to take away those factors and replace them with this du, giving me I now have the indefinite integral of sine of u du. 
And then at this point, it's really straightforward. I don't need to think about anything else going on. This is really the beauty of the, of the substitution rule. The derivative of the, the integral, excuse me, of sine of u is negative cosine of u plus c. And then always we need to make sure that after we've integrated, I'm going to now back, go back and input this to put this in terms of x. So what this becomes is negative cosine of x squared plus c. When we get started getting deep into integration, you're going to see substitution used in some really smart, inventive ways. But the basic way you use a substitution is this. First of all, when you're looking to integrate something, you're asking yourself, is that a composition of functions? In this case, we have sine composed with x squared right here. That's going to give us an idea of like maybe we're going to use the substitution rule. The one thing that would tell you, yes, for sure, I'm going to use substitution here. I know what my u substitution is going to be is when you see the inner function, the derivative of that inner function outside out here. So the fact that I saw that 2x, I'm thinking, oh yeah, heck yeah, I can use u substitution because I know that when I differentiate this x squared, I get this factor of 2x, which will allow me to make this differential replacement so that I can turn this into du. That's really the big move, is once you've done this, you're going to try something, and then the game becomes, can I get rid of dx and all the other stuff that's making the integral difficult? Because again, in this case, just to say, if I didn't say in the beginning, this is a difficult integral because it has a polynomial term, this 2x, or not term, factor, excuse me, being multiplied by this sine of x squared function. Like that's a difficult, complicated expression. But through this move, and if I can translate this into a, an integral with respect to u, I now have a very simple integral to calculate and can easily get back to my original expression in terms of x. In this second example, it's not as obvious what the inner function and the outer function is. Here I'm trying to integrate z squared over z cubed plus 1 with respect to z. Um, so again, I'm looking and saying, man, I don't see an inner function. Then we're going to go into our second kind of mode. And my thinking is, is there a large expression here that if I differentiated it would be one of these factors that I see? And in that case, if I let u equal this entire denominator, when I differentiate that, I'm going to get a 3z squared. Now, importantly, I don't have 3z squared, but I have that z squared. The beauty of with coefficient, with constant coefficients, is the fact that I can move them in and outside of the in integral. So actually, if as long as I can get close to this within a, a constant factor, I'm going to be just fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let u equal this denominator here of z cubed plus 1. And so then I'm just going to do my little work here before I substitute anything. Um, in this case, if I take the derivative with respect to z, I get du dz equals 3z squared. Now, what I'm going to do is do this differential move, mul multiply both sides of this by dz. And when I do that, I will get du equals 3z squared dz. Now again, at this point, what I'm looking for is to replace this stuff in this expression with this du. But importantly, I don't see the 3z squared. I just see a z squared and a dz. There's two ways to attack this. One way is to multiply by 3 and then multiply by 1 third, or multiply by 3 and divide by 3. That's completely legitimate, though I'm not going to use that move. What I'm going to do instead is just manipulate this and say, well, I'm close enough. Um, if I divide both sides by 3 or multiply both sides by 1 third, what I'll end up with is 1 third du equals z squared dz. So then I'll make my substitutions here. And again, I've highlighted in color coding what my substitutions are. I'm going to do them two at a time here. What I'm first going to do is just do my substitution with the u right here, just so you can see this step. Um, I'm going to write this as 1 over u. And just for fun and just to make it more clear from your side, I'm going to write this as z squared dz. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute this z squared dz with the one-third du, and that will give me the integral of 1 over u times one-third du. And now before I finish this, I want to make something really clear. 
Now, when I'm doing this u substitution, so I'm replacing this with this equivalent expression right here, I then can't actually integrate in any useful way because I have these two different variables and I'm integrating with respect to just one of them right there. And there are methods of doing that, but they're extremely complicated. The game is, if I change one of these variables on the inside, in this case, I'm writing this as u, to be able to integrate, I sure as heck need to replace this differential that's in terms of some other variable and replace it with u. And that method is this trick right here. And again, to say, when I, when I differentiated this z, z cubed, I got this 3z squared. But if I'm only off from my other stuff based on a, a constant multiple, it's not a big deal. In this case, I'm just dividing by 3 or multiplying by 1 third. When I do this, the reason that constant multiple isn't a big deal is right at this point, I can use that constant multiple rule for integrals, which says this now becomes 1 third times the integral of 1 over u du. From here, now it is super easy. We have an integral in terms of u with respect to u. The integral, the antiderivative of 1 over u is the natural, natural log of the absolute value of x. And so what I get here, or in this case it's u, I get the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. And then my final step is always I want to answer in terms of the variable where the question was asked. So just replace u with this statement up here. And so I get one third, the natural log of the absolute value of z cubed plus one plus c. So for this problem, in my mind, it's not clearly obvious what the u substitution would be. If I was a student, this would be exactly the same kind of problem that I would probably try three or four times. My inclination, given what I've said for the first examples, would be I want u to be this x squared because then it would become 2x after differentiating and I have this x on the inside here. The issue actually is in this case is because this x that would be a factor of that is has something being added to it, which is very different than something being multiplied because if it's being multiplied, that's pretty easy to manipulate. When we have these different terms, things get more difficult. So there's a, a quite a bit different reasons for doing what I'm about to do. But what I would look at this and say is out of all of this, this is, the, uh, this is difficult because it's the multiplication of, of this polynomial factor and this radical. What's the most difficult to actually deal with is the stuff under the square root. So in this case, what I'm going to do is let u equal 2 plus x. Then if I differentiate both sides with respect to x, what I'll get is du dx equals just 1 here. So then if I multiply over this differential of x, what I get is that du equals dx. Now at first glance, this looks pretty sweet. It's going to be pretty dang easy to switch my differential because I can do an equal swap with du and dx. I get u equals this 2 plus x. So now if I write out where I'm at at this point, what I have is the integral of x squared the square root of u, again, u was that expression right there, and I can do a straight swap for the dx and du. In this case, I'm still in a pretty bad spot. Though I've simplified this expression here and was able to swap out this differential, I have this integral that has these two variables, but I'm integrating with respect to this variable. We were just talking about this in the last example. The game is, what I'm trying to do is get this expression to... to to equal up with this differential here because this is telling me the variable with which I'm integrating with. Though here's where we are now can do a little bit of algebra and to make our life a little bit easier. What I'm going to do is I'm going to manipulate this expression right here. Specifically, I want to see what x squared is equal. In this case, I'm going to see if I can write an expression that is equal to x squared in terms of u and if plugging that in makes my life easier. So u equals 2 plus x. What I'm going to do is subtract 2 from both sides to get u minus 2 equals x. And then square both sides of this to get u minus 2 squared equals x squared. And so what I can do now is I actually can substitute x squared with this u minus 2 squared. Again, there might be questions of how much is this helping? Well, you're going to see in one second what this does for us. Again, part of the game is these terms are a bit of an issue. Like I was saying, the, the, the addition here inside of the square root makes things a bit awkward. 
Though when I have expressions like this with multiple terms inside of a square root, it's a bit awkward. Though if something like this isn't so bad because I can expand it. So what I'm going to do now, I'm only a couple of steps away. I now have an expression just in terms of u. I'm going to expand this. I'm going to write this as u to the one half. Then I'm going to get this big expression that will then I can, then then use the anti-power rule on each of the terms. So what I'll get when I do that is I get when I expand this out, I'm going to get u squared minus four u plus four. All of that is times u to the one half du. And then when I multiply this factor into each of these terms, u squared times u to the one half is u to the five halves minus four u to the three halves plus four u to the one half du. Then I can now apply that anti-power rule to each of these terms. So I'm going to add one to five halves to get u to the seven halves divided by seven halves and then minus four u now to the five halves divided by five halves plus four u to the three halves now divided by three halves plus c. I'm now just going to clean this up a little bit again doing that uh, inverse and multiply or reciprocal and multiply for each of those factors. Then finally as always I've been given an integral in terms of x. I need to rewrite this in terms of x which simply means replacing u in each of these terms with the equivalent expression here. So this becomes 2 sevenths times 2 plus x to the 7 halves minus eight fifths, two plus x to five halves, plus eight thirds, three plus, uh, sorry, two, two plus x to the three halves, plus c. Again, to recap here, it wasn't obvious what was the inner function and the outer function, but what I did decide to do was go with this somewhat of an inner function, two plus x, even though I didn't see its different, its derivative on the outside. But when I did this substitution, what I'm looking for is whatever is left, in this case x squared, can I write an expression equivalent to that in terms of u? Here I just took this equation, solved it for x, and then squared both sides. Importantly, and if it's not clear, it will be clear when you start working on some of these problems and for the rest of the quarter, is that Often with u substitution, it's not going to be obvious what your substitution is, but you've got to be willing just to try. Try something, plug it in, look at it, and then see something and say, did that make my life any better? I mean, quite honestly, at this point, you might be looking at this and being like, Phew. I mean, all I really did right here was swap out this plus and minus that was going on you know, on the inside and the outside. Though hopefully from seeing this example, you'd say that actually is a pretty dang big deal. Now that that subtraction addition is, uh, that subtraction, instead of an addition on the inside of the radical, I have a subtraction inside this squaring right here. That is something that I can expand. Now this I can simply write as u to the one half. Now I have terms instead of, in terms of u, and I can distribute this through. While the fractional exponents aren't the greatest thing in the world, they're not hard as far as integration to deal with using the anti-power rule, always ending with replacing my substitution so that my answer is in terms of the variable which I was, which I was integrating with respect to in the beginning.